At a high-security diamond transfer, Stan grows frustrated with an overly complicated control system. Elsewhere, a heated discussion ensues over a controversial decision at a Lakers game. Later, a somewhat insensitive character is quick to dismiss a service worker. Max gets upset over an unpopular referee decision during a Lakers game and causes a scene. At the same time, Stan becomes worried about Burdett's disappearance during a diamond transfer, knowing he's dealt with him before. Confusion ensues in the stadium as Burdett seemingly escapes their sight. Simultaneously, Max, oblivious to the chaos, is still causing a scene. Later, after a harrowing escape, Burdett and Lola unwind in their own way before discussing their next venture, which leads to a playful spat about potential destinations. Max, amidst his roller coaster hijinks, fails to notice Burdett's near miss with capture. As chaos unfolds, Lola's only concern is to get the diamond. Stan, after a disoriented moment, inquires if Lola and Burdett are okay. In a carnival setting, Max takes the opportunity to tell Lola he has written his wedding vows when they unexpectedly run into Ron and Gail, who Max had previously met at the tennis club. Their fun and games are interrupted by this chance encounter. At a lobster dinner, Max meets several of Ron and Gail's friends, who all bond over various stories. Amid the fun, Max gives a tongue-in-cheek response about sweatshops when asked about his business. The conversation takes an unexpected twist when Sheila and her partner express their interest in swapping partners. Francine encourages Max to steal Sheila's bracelet, teasing him with a bet he can't resist. Meanwhile, Max covers for Ron who's lost his wallet. At the bar, Luke is busy taking exotic drink orders while Max opts for a traditional Jack on the Rocks. The scene takes a flirtatious turn as Sheila returns from her underwater adventure and teases Max suddenly. Agent Lloyd breaks into their tranquil environment revealing that he is tracking Max's connection to the Seven Seas Navigator's maiden voyage. Sheila teases Max about her tennis lessons while Agent Lloyd confronts Max about his potential involvement in a gem theft from the upcoming Diamond Cruise. Following their contentious interaction, Max warns Sheila not to enter a specific room. After Agent Lloyd leaves, Max and Sheila argue over his continued involvement in criminal activity, fearfully noting the presence of hidden bugs in their room. Seeing something wrong with one camera, they find the bullet that Agent Lloyd had shot at Max, realizing it could jeopardize their safety. Understanding the risks, Lola promises she'll retrieve it. A trip to the luxurious Atlantis resort doesn't impress Agent Lloyd, who insists there would be no let-up in his surveillance of Max. Meanwhile, Lola successfully manages to find and retrieve the bullet hidden in their room. Max and Sheila, however, can't shake off the tension and are left with a lost appetite. Agent Lloyd makes it clear to Max that he can't be bribed or influenced. While tensions escalate between the two, Lola coaxes Stanley to dance. Max's conversation with the constable ends up in a physical confrontation, emphasizing his tenacity. See, Audrey, Stanley, Max, Lola, constable. When Stanley tries to force Max into his game, Audrey staunchly warns him against it. Things heat up at the club as Max and Stanley get into an altercation, which ends with the constable confiscating Stanley's concealed weapon and arresting Max. Audrey finds Agent Lloyd's subtle flirtations amusing during his gun registration in the club. Meanwhile, Sophie gets into a heated argument with Zacharias over her duties. Unbothered by his disapproval, Sophie spitefully informs Zacharias about her plans to meet with the newly arrived Agent Lloyd. Agent Lloyd continues to subtly flirt with Audrey while they discuss the allure of temptation. Audrey, however, remains wary of his intentions. Meanwhile, they discuss Max, a thief whom Agent Lloyd has been pursuing for seven years after an incident involving a stolen Napoleon diamond. Sophie is also involved in the discussion, emphasizing the thief's audaciousness. Agent Lloyd admits to Sophie and Audrey that he doesn't admire the thief, Max, but maybe appreciates his artistry and theft. Audrey aims to offer assistance in his mission with a female touch. Meanwhile, Max busies himself with expanding a deck, assuredly deflecting from his current situation. Max and Sophie join Audrey at a museum where a rare diamond is on display. While Sophie and Audrey analyze the display diamond's security measures, Max is nonchalantly underestimating it which irate Audrey. Later, Max is summoned by a disguised Henri Moore agent Lloyd, who is determined to engage Max in his tactics. At a charity event, Agent Lloyd, Disguised as Henri Moore and knowing Max's past as an expert thief, manipulates him into initiating a theft. He suggests stealing the diamond on display at a museum to support Moore's philanthropic endeavors on the island. Max denies being a criminal, leaving their intentions unclear. Agent Lloyd and Max continue their discussion about stealing the diamond, with Moore revealing his intentions to use the money to fund his humanitarian program. 
Meanwhile, Lola bumps into Max and they reminisce about their past as successful thieves. During a continued debate with Max about the diamond heist, Agent Lloyd calls Max out on his bluff, insisting he reveal his real plan. Later, Lola starts adjusting to a mundane, low-abiding life but more remains suspicious, deciding to confront Lola further during a fishing trip. Lloyd's unconventional interrogation continues as he invites Max for a fishing trip, an offer Max can't refuse under the circumstances. On the boat, they continue their banter, Lloyd quizzing Max on his expensive watch and the real story behind his injury, while Max deflects his probing questions with dry humor. The duo's fishing trip suddenly turns exciting as they hook a monster. Lloyd and Max enthusiastically reel it in, only to discover they've caught a shark. In a moment of unease, they debate what to do with their surprising catch on the boat. In an odd twist of roles, Lloyd and Max try to handle the dead shark. Meanwhile, Lola and Sophie, the rogue cop and the thief, find common ground over guns and shoes. Lloyd finally wins a chess game and Sophie expresses her wish for him to write his wedding vows. Lloyd decides to relax the tense atmosphere by stripping down to the surprise of everyone else. Surprisingly, Max is treated to a special guest by Lola. As they continue with their leisurely activities, their boat is suddenly breached, causing a panic. Despite their sophisticated security system, a Seven Seas Navigator maintenance worker gets knocked out, raising alarms while the Napoleon Diamond remains untouched. Lola accuses Max of being more interested in the Napoleon Diamond than in her. As Max denies this, Lola is determined to fight for their relationship. Meanwhile, tension rises between two police partners while they discuss a case related to the diamond, leading them to decide to strictly keep their relationship professional. A wealthy man proposes to Max an illegal job involving armed robbery from a ship that is due to leave in two days. Offering him schematics and plans, he attempts to convince him to conduct the operation himself. Max agrees to follow the theft plan detailed by a wealthy man to rob an exhibit through the air conditioning vents during the graveyard shift. He's told to cut off surveillance and use a shape charge for effective entry. Max is then seen at the Atlantis, asking concierge to connect him to Stanley at the bridge suite. Max is seen talking on phone with Stan while simultaneously being followed. An officer arrives, thinking Max is in danger. Later, Max gets treatment for pain, but while sharing an intimate moment with a woman, he rudely interrupts it to answer a work call. Max leaves his intimate moment with a woman for work. Luke calls from the bar to inform Max about a drunk guest shouting his name who turns out to be Frank. Frank, having drunk too much, talks openly about his suspicions that Max will steal again, making him look like a jerk. Max reconnects with Stan, his former associate, at a bar. A drunk Stan, having realized his lack of talent compared to Max, feels dejected about his abilities. In the meantime, Luke helps Max handle a drunken Stan and puts him to bed. Towards the end, Max arrives at Lola's only to find out that she has discovered his secret notebook. Determined to salvage their relationship, Max tries to convince Lola by offering to immediately write his vows. However, Lola pushes him to reassess their relationship's true worth. Stan hosts Max who's seeking temporary accommodation after being thrown out by Lola. In conversation with Stan, Max shares clueless about handling a mistimed sunset, which makes Stan reflect on people's inherent differences and their pursuit of happiness. Stan shares a room with Max, joking about the situation. Unexpectedly, they're confronted by Kowalski and Sophie from the FBI. They disclose that Stan is suspended and are suspicious of his motives as it appears that Max, the suspect, is funding his stay. Kowalski and Sophie call Stan out for lying about his ties with suspect Max and their luxurious arrangements. As they delve deeper into Stan's personal life, Max emphasizes he could explain the situation to Sophie, appearing quite compassionate towards Stan's emotional state. Max attempts to persuade Lola and Sophie to see Stan as a decent person who's ready to change. While the ladies express doubt, Max offers an unexpected escape, a scuba diving adventure to a hidden reef rumored to harbor an enormous gold cache. He suggests this excursion as a fresh start for them all. After arriving at the hidden reef, the group decides to split up and search for the rumored gold. Amidst casual banter and speculation about the potential riches, an alarm goes off at their base indicating an attempted break-in at their storage facility, causing a sudden shift in the mood. Max continues to explore the ship while Stan tries to locate him. When the heat is cut off from their jacuzzi, they realize Max is meddling with their operations. Suddenly, an alert goes off indicating that the diamond they're searching for is in the vents and Max has got it. Stan and his team scramble, trying to contact Max, who seems to have disappeared leaving his radio behind. A disguised figure then shows up, adding to the confusion. 
While Max continues his mischief unbeknownst to all, Stan has an air supply issue due to a faulty regulator. Stan's partner shows up just in time to save him. Later at a gathering, a toast to retirement is interrupted with the shocking news of the diamond's theft. Accused by Stan of setting everything up and betraying him, Max attempts to reconcile with Lola, believing they bonded over an impressive heist. Lola, however, is done with Max in his deceit, but their moment is suddenly interrupted by the police, showing that their criminal actions are far from over yet. After a violent altercation, Max and Lola are questioned by the police. Max grasps at one last attempt to make things right with Lola by showing her letters he'd written but never sent. Lola refutes Max's attempt at reconciliation, intimating it's too late for them. Max finally proposes to Lola with a sincere apology and a diamond. Despite their past, Lola accepts, marking a joyous celebration. Unexpectedly, Stanley, still lurking around, reveals a chunk of Max's diamond, a shocking twist hinting at Stanley's role in Max's reported diamond loss. Stan is revealed to be Max's saboteur. A vengeful Stan gloats about his success in setting Max up and leaving him with nothing. However, Max argues he has won because he still has Lola. In response, Stan confirms his departure, drawing a line under their feud. A vocal showdown takes place between Max and Stan. Max dives into the ocean to claim a treasure, precipitating a climactic boat chase. In their escape, Max and Lola not only claim the treasure, but seemingly begin to relish this new thrilling, nomadic lifestyle. In a victory celebration, a song ignition sparks the atmosphere. Lyrics regarding challenging abilities and never underestimating resonate with the recent events, providing a fitting backdrop. Max, Lola, and their friends dance, sing, and celebrate their successful escape and newfound freedom. Following their victory, Max, Lola, and their friends let loose in a dance celebration. As the singers rouse the crowd with their song, an atmosphere of camaraderie, relief, and joy permeates the room, their lyrics reflecting a theme of temptation and attraction. Embracing their triumph, Max and Lola, along with their entire crew, let out their pure joy and happiness on the dance floor. Bewitched by Lola's lore, Max is deliriously drawn towards her, while Lola reciprocates his affection with her electrifying dance moves. Their electric energy is belladized by the pulsating beat of the music and their sensual dance moves symbolizing more than just dance, but a thrilling dance of affection and attraction. As the song lyrics play, Lesson Learned, Don't Judge a Book by Looking at the Cover, it reflects the deeper meaning of their blossoming relationship.